Good afternoon and welcome to the City Council meeting for the City of International Falls for Tuesday, January 22, 2019. Would ask all present to please arise and pledge allegiance to the flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I would ask the administrator to note the roll call with all members of the council present. Move to the agenda, and there are additions to the agenda under the consent agenda, snowplow licenses, and um, approving travel and training uh, for three members of the Public Works Department to attend a Northeast Pruning Workshop in Duluth. Your pleasure with the agenda and the additions. So moved. Motion by Councillor Kraus. Second. Second by Councillor Deitch to approve the agenda with the additions. Question on the motion or the agenda? None question. Aye. 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 Yes, motion is carried. Agenda is approved with the additions. Thank you. Move to the minutes of January 7th, the organizational meeting of the City Council. Make motion to accept the minutes. Motion by Councillor Droba. All second. Second by Councillor Krause to approve the January 7 Organizational City Council meeting minutes. Discussion on the motion or the minutes. Bring none question. Aye. 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 I would vote yes. Motion is carried. Minutes are approved. Thank you. And then we also have the minutes of the January 7 regular City Council meeting. Your pleasure with those, please. Seven. Motion by Councillor Buller to approve. All second. Second by Councillor Droba. Discussion on the motion or the minutes. Question, please. Aye. 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 I would vote yes. Motion is carried. Minutes are approved. Thank you. Move to the resolution on the transfers and the payment of accounts payable claims. We have transfers to uh, the general fund of $9,951.67 from the water and sewer fund and to the permanent improvement fund $66,666.66. I don't know how you do that. Uh, from the uh, water and sewer fund and then uh, to the reserve for capital outlay $25,760.42 and that's also from the water and sewer funds. And then accounts payable for the City of International Falls, $492,873.71. Airport Commission claims of $26,056.37 claims. And then Library Board claims of $3,505.39. Your pleasure with the resolution in, on the transfers and payment of claims. Order. Is it 31 cents or 71 cents on the uh, City of International Falls, please? On the International Falls claims, uh, have 31. Is there a... You'd said 71. I'm sorry. For clarification. Thank you. Thank you. It should be uh, $492,873.31. Thank you. Thank you. Your pleasure with the resolution? So moved. Motion by Councillor Krause to adopt the resolution. Second. Second by Councillor Deitch. Discussion on the motion or the resolution? Hearing no discussion, question. Aye. 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 I would vote yes, motion is carried. Resolution is adopted, approving the payment of claims and the transfers. Thank you. Move to the audience. Is there anyone in the audience that wishes to uh, approach the council at this time on any item? And if not, there'll be another opportunity at the uh, close of the meeting. 
move to um, the consent agenda. We have um, the consent agenda includes uh, snowplow licenses for Boyer's scrubber rug and lawn care business and Russo's renovations LLC. Uh, we also have um, approval of the travel and training for employees Matt Buller and Andy Kittleson to attend the Minnesota Asphalt Pavement Rehabilitation Products Seminar February 19 in Detroit Lakes. Approve the travel and continuing education training expenses for Justin Mostead and Rory Gilo to attend the Solid Waste Operators Refresher Course in Grand Rapids on March 13. Approve attendance and travel expenses for city representatives to attend the 2020 Census, organizing for a complete count seminar on the census on February 20th in Mount Iron. And lastly, the addition to the uh, agenda, and that was to approve the travel and training and purchase of an MSA membership for the three public works department staff to attend the Northeast Minnesota Pruning Workshop February 1 at the UMD campus. Your pleasure with the consent agenda. I'll make a motion. Motion by Councillor Deach to approve the consent agenda. Second. Second by Councillor Droba. There being no debate on the consent agenda, the chair would call a question. Aye. 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 And I would vote yes. Motion is carried. Consent agenda is approved. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Please. Yeah. Um, Councillor Buller pointed out on the January 7th minutes that oh. <laughs> there's, a, yeah. <laughs> there's a mistake on the January 7th minutes. I apologize for going back. Oh, thank it, you. It says Councillor Jackson. It. <laughs> we, got, we got an extra councillor in there. We're missing, we're missing one. We're missing house. Oh. oh we got thank you. So we need to add to the January 7 city council, regular city council meeting, we need to remove Jacksaw and place Councillor Krause in there. Thank you. Good good catch. Yes. God, I read those minutes. I didn't see that. Yeah, I didn't see it either. Move to a new business, the uh, Budget and Finance Committee recommendation for the 2019 agreement between the City of International Falls and the International Falls Area Chamber of Commerce. Councilor Groba, Chair of the Budget and Finance Committee, please. I would uh, make the motion to accept the uh, agreement between the City of International Falls and the uh, International Falls Area Chamber of Commerce. I will second that motion. Okay, we have a motion by Councillor Droba and a second by Councillor Krause to adopt the <coughs> agreement between the City of International Falls and the International Falls Area Chamber of Commerce. Discussion, please. Seeing and hearing none, the Chair would place the question. Aye. 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 I would vote yes. Motion is carried. Agreement is approved. Thank you. Item number two under new business is a resolution approving the application for an exempt permit for the Rough Grouse Society Voyager Chapter to conduct a raffle on March 29, 2019. That is to be held at the American. So moved. Motion by Councillor Droba to Second. approve. Second by Councillor Buller. Discussion. No discussion, question. Aye. 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 Yes, motion is carried. Resolution is adopted and approval is given for the permit for to conduct a raffle. Thank you. Item number three <clears throat> is a resolution approving the 2019 wages and benefits for the non-union personnel. City Administrator. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would draw your attention to the fact that I uh, uh, there was an error on the first uh, form that was submitted. So at the uh, in the Exhibit A attachment to it, the first two line items had dollar amounts per hour increases versus percentages. So the one that was handed out has the revised percentage changes for the city administrator and the deputy city administrator. And uh, the city charter requires that we submit or that the council approve um, salary 
changes by resolution, so we put that in resolution form. Uh, the previous city council had met and discussed this at an HR level and at a budget and finance committee level prior to adopting the 2019 preliminary budget, which had to be submitted to the county auditor by September 30th of 2018. And so uh, this particular resolution has been prepared and effective on January 1st so that we can process the salaried employees under the um, increases that you see. In addition to the wage increases, which for most people are 2%, um, with the exception of the first two I mentioned, there's also an increase in the health care or health insurance cost benefits for family coverage. Um, it's being increased from $1,200 per month in 2018. Actually, it's uh, for salaried employees, it's a 1074. It's going up to 1250 per month in uh, 2019. And so that's included as part of this proposed action. And because of the uh, requirement to have uh, changes done by resolution, uh, we've outlined the proposed changes in the health insurance cost, which is a $50 increase per month for 2019, and then the percentage increases by position. Thank you. Questions for the uh, city administrator? Uh, Administrator Anderson, how close does this get us to the pay equity for the rest of the state? Because I know that that's been something that you've been looking at for quite some time. Yeah, the well, the pay equity is more of an issue for um, making sure that female-dominated job classifications are not underpaid relative to comparably. Um, scoring male-dominated positions, and so this does bring, does, does bring it in closer into compliance. We were in compliance last time we submitted a report. This will uh, equalize things, um, but outside of pay equity, then there's also, you know, how do we compare with the external market, and that's part of the reasons why the, I think the pay equity was the primary justification for the increase in the deputy city administrator's position, and then the external market relative to what other city administrators make for comparably sized communities is why there's a, a bigger increase for my position, so. Definitely hit the point I was trying to get to of why we have an 18 percent in one one category, which is to get closer to that pay equity for that position. Further questions? I would then take uh, a motion with regard to adopting the resolution. I'll move. Motion by Councillor Deitch. I'll second. Second by Councillor Droba to adopt the resolution approving the 2019 wages and benefits for non-union personnel. Discussion or further discussion, please. Seeing and hearing none, Chair would place the question. Aye. 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 Yes, motion is carried. Resolution is adopted approving the 2019 wages and benefits for non-union personnel. Thank you. Any other new business to come before the council? If not, we'll move to uh, reports of uh, boards, committees, and department heads. City Administrator, please. Mr. Mayor, I don't have anything additional that I'd like to report. Uh, just make the comment that um, we had good attendance, I think, at the housing study presentation last Thursday at the Bacchus Auditorium. And uh, given the weather conditions, I was uh, glad to see that we had a fairly good turnout. Mr. Steve Greaser had done a presentation about his findings for the Kuchiching County housing study as a whole, and then specifically his findings for the city of International Falls. So I just wanted to thank the councilors that were there and you, Mayor, for, for taking the time out of your busy schedules to be there. Thank you. City Attorney is out of town at this time. Chief Maston. I have nothing, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, seeing no other department heads, but I would like to uh, ask our International Falls Area Chamber of Commerce President, if you would give, give us a minute or two on the icebox days of which we lived up to the, uh, uh, our, certainly uh, temperature-wise anyway. Approach from here. So whatever you like, I'm, please. I'm grateful. I was gonna, I was gonna ask to comment on that. So first, thank you for the contract support and passing that. I believe that together we're gonna serve the businesses as well with the funding provided. 
Uh, we did. So the, so my second Icebox Days, last year we had great weather. This year I myself was one who, as I'm watching the temperature, the forecast, like drop, 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 I kept saying, do we really not cancel? Is there any point of consideration? Do, is there anybody we should be checking with? Are we sure this isn't like a liability? And right, that, that's the thing about especially not only Icebox Days, but the freeze your desert blizzard is that it all goes on. So we actually set a cold weather temperature record that morning for the 5K of negative 36 degrees. So the race has run with colder wind chills and thankfully, we did not have the wind to contend with this weekend, like negative 45 and, you know, the one infamous year. And it, I believe the wind chill scales changed on record, it's negative 72, and they ran 3.4 miles that year. So we had 125 runners still show up and participate in that. Uh, attendance was roughly impacted by some events, but overall, like as we moved around on, on Friday and Saturday, there were people out and about, and thankfully the majority are inside or near indoors where people were participating. 11 kids smoosh teams showed up to play, 9 adults smoosh, so there was a lot of people around for that. Uh, we had a full schedule of 36 events starting out the weekend. We did end up having to cancel three. So two were cold weather related. One was the cheering contest for the... second was the hot dog roast that's done out at Tilson Creek. They have a zero degree threshold, so if it drops under that, they reschedule. And then the third that needed to be canceled was the Moonlight Snowshoe Hike out at Voyagers National Park due to the shutdown. So, Overall, we, I, I, I was impressed. I felt like we had a great crowd and attitude. Like it, There was just the people who were out and about on a day like that and a weekend like that really wanted to be there. And it just felt like a lot of good energy through the weekend. So we were very Great weather and, and then, great events. Um, just to follow up from prior, the other th discussions that we've had that I just wanted to ask is that now that that one is done, and because the anniversary year is a big one that's approaching, and I know we've talked about wanting to talk more about Icebox Days events and schedule and things like that, is I would just request of the council, if we meet again in finance or whatever group would be appropriate, that we could ideally schedule that meeting, meeting than later, just for fall or spring, maybe summer, when we traditionally get into budget details, but to kind of know that's how that's going to look. So, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Did you want to give us a rundown on the? Uh, I know the event was not at International Falls, but uh, you um, certainly. I'll just be real brief. Um, we had about 150 um, or more participants and spectators. At least two dozen, probably closer to 25 people were actually from outside the area. Um, for the fourth year in a row, Gephardt Electric, they are our premier, premier sponsor, and if anybody ever followed the building of the new stadium, they were the electrical contractor of the new stadium. Um, so they've been there four years in a row. They uh, pledged a great deal of money again this year to be here next year. And um, we raised I don't have a final amount. We'll figure that out tonight um, on what our final amount is that we're going to be donating to the food shelf, but it'll be right in that uh, $45 to $5,500 range, right in there. And uh, again, the two dozen, three dozen people that are from out of town, I just want the council to try and just think about this as we start going forward, that those are people that stayed in International Falls they shopped in International Falls, they bought their groceries, they ate their, bought their fuel here. So the city does see a benefit from events that are outside the city limits. Thank you. I, I, I had the pleasure of meeting some of those uh, at the uh, pancake breakfast at the uh, Elks Hall Saturday morning. They were from Hastings, I believe, that uh, participated in the... Uh, Another group, yes. Yeah. So, very good. Very successful. Thank you both for... Speaking of traveling, if I can go back to our furthest travel for the 5K was a couple from Alaska. 
and our furthest travel for the 10K was a couple from Pomona, California. So, and the California people I got to talk to was funny. They specifically came here for this. The woman said her friends thought she was absolutely nuts to come and run this 10K, and they're all watching the weather and thinking, like, what in the world are you doing? And uh, oh, she she. She was funny, she's from the Philippines, and she's like, I told my friends if I die, I die, and I'm gonna go do this. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, if Rich we had no issues over the weekend, she did everything went smoothly. Uh, everybody completed the course we started, so it was, yeah. I do have to add that. <clears throat> Um, my sister-in-law came and ran the 5k which I thought she was crazy but we checked in with her at several locations on the course and everybody seemed to to handle it fine looked like it went off without a she ran the five um, but I, I also have to say uh, and I know Chief Manas is not here but a big thank you to the International Falls Fire Department I think they put on a beautiful display um, you know, it was quick but beautiful, and they uh, they really braved the elements out there to get that fireworks display off. And I mean, it was basically right on time, so it was it was really nice to see. And there was there was quite a few people downtown. I was surprised, actually. Mm -hmm. There were quite a few people downtown to watch the fireworks on Saturday night, and I think it was I want to say it was about 28 below. I think at that point, and yeah, so it was it was good. It was a good time. And, and thank you to our public works department uh, for preparing the race course and thank you to the city police department for uh, their assistance in uh, having a safe race. So good good work by, uh, by all and just a great time. Other councillors wish to uh, make a comment on celebration? <laughs> also, I'd like to thank uh, publicly thank the, the Border Patrol. They had a couple vehicles out there, or cost, U.S. Cost, I never know which is which. But at any rate, there was a couple extra vehicles out. I know the one was on the corner of 1171 and 11th Street there. That's and the Border Patrol. Border Patrol. Always and willing to <clears throat> it, was, it was nice to see. Um, I got an opportunity to speak to an officer on the corner, uh, or on... Uh, he was on 4th Street and Highway 53. He was blocking traffic there, but it was nice to see other law enforcement agencies out there um, participating in blocking off traffic and, and keeping everybody safe. That was that was really cool to see the different. And I, I did have a person from out of town comment on that, that it was cool to see that the sheriff's department was on one corner and you had border patrol and city police. and So it was a real coordinated effort. And that was kind of cool to see. Wonderful. Thank you. All right, nothing further under reports of the uh, department heads. Uh, we will move to uh, mayor, council committees, boards and commissions. Any, uh, any committees there that wish to? Uh, you have the mayor's report, so uh, that's in writing for you to uh, peruse. We'll go to the audience again, if there's anyone in the audience that wishes to uh, approach the council at this time. Not, uh, you note the correspondence and the next regular city council meeting is Monday, February 4th at 2000, uh, 2019 at 4.30 p.m. Nothing further to come before the council. We will stand adjourned.